I have a piece of uh, ribbon, this is about a 10 centimeters in that. It's already clean, but this is how I need uh, uh, emery paper, uh, sandpaper to clean this. To clean the oxide that is formed, uh, ready to burn the magnesium ribbon. So as you can see, it has bright light. And you can see the smoke uh, coming out of it. What do you think will happen to the, will happen to the mass of uh, the magnesium ribbon? So let's find out what has happened to the mass, whether it's increased mass or decreased in mass. It will decrease. That that is kind of like a, a natural answer for people to have. But I want you to, to think about we are going from magnesium, aren't we? We are. It's reacting with oxygen, and when it's finished reacting, then what do we have? All of the magnesium that was there shouldn't have gone anywhere. It should have all reacted with, with how much of oxygen it needs to form magnesium oxide. So therefore, whatever magnesium was in the ribbon, it's still there in the oxide, but now it's the magnesium plus the oxygen. Thanks for sharing that response, Priya. I'm sure a lot of people felt the same. Naturally, people feel you set something on fire, its, it's mass, the mass of the product is going to be less than the mass of the reactant. Okay? And now, Priya, that you're thinking about what I'm saying, is it making sense that it should go up? Yeah. Mg solid plus O2 gas gives MgO solid. So, once none of that escapes, then we should be getting a change in mass and that extra mass is coming from where? Oxygen. Right? Oxygen. It's a certain amount of oxygen that is going to combine with, with the magnesium to give you that uh, magnesium oxide. So it's oxygen. And that amount of change in mass, when we, when we could actually calculate what that change in mass is, and we could then go get the atomic mass of oxygen, we could get moles of oxygen. And on the other side, we, before we begin, we could get moles of magnesium. And once we have moles of both, then we can put them together and see if the ratio comes one is to one. But something happened when Mr. Ranjan was burning that, um, that strip. That you don't want that to happen if you're doing a proper experiment. What is it? When he just set it on fire, I don't think that would be a good way to go about doing our experiment. Before we actually do it the other way, I want someone to say what was the big concern about some place where a lot of mass would be lost. There was a lot of smoke coming from the... Well, there was a lot of smoke. That's a, that, And that is going to carry a, maybe not a whole lot, but some particulates of the magnesium oxide. It will be hot and it will go into the air. Okay? So, it's just one strip that we're burning, but, uh, but one small piece. And that, if that carries a small piece of mass with it into the air, then that's lost. And Mr. Ranjan also has the tongs there that he was, if he holds it up, if you notice at the tip of it, what's that at the tip? What's the product? Magnesium oxide. That's magnesium oxide. So magnesium oxide is going to be sitting there, some of it on the tongs, some of it in the air. So we would be having a certain kind of experimental error that we will be carrying here. What type of experimental error are we building if we go about this, this way? Systemic errors. Systematic error. Systematic error, we're going to could be consistently losing mass from what we should have. Some mass is going to stay on the tongs, some of it is going to go into the air. So there's got to be a better way. We will be burning the ribbon in a crucible. Uh, this ribbon I've taken is it's about uh, 15 centimeters in length. And I have, coined, I have cleaned it and also I've uh, coiled it. See that this sits well inside the crucible. Okay, before burning it, I will weigh the empty crucible with the lid using a 2 dB balance. Okay, so zero. The empty crucible with the lid is 40.95. 41.21. Four one point two one. Now to for the magnesium ribbon to burn, it needs oxygen. So gently lift the lid so that I can let in some oxygen.
Yes, hasn't started to burn yet. Um, Reason for the crucible lid and for not handling the magnesium so much with the tongs. I want to hear somebody tell me about that. Is it so that no uh, outside like pollutants get in? No outside pollutants will get in. But, but that is that you can't throw that point away. It's a valid point, but it's not the big point. It keeps the smoke in, and also because it's like in the in the crucible, the tongs won't um, be touching it and taking away from the mass. Right, the tongs won't be touching it, so that you won't be getting any little bit of mass o over on the tongs. You might think, okay, the tongs is going to just take a little bit, but we're not dealing with a huge amount of mass, right? So we don't want the tongs to touch it too much. Or at all, if possible. Yeah, the magnesium is on fire, but the syringe doesn't want to have it too much smoke es escape, right? Because we've discussed that. The more smoke that you have escape, um, little bits of mass will get lost there. And all of the little pieces add up. What do you think? If we use a big piece of magnesium, you guys, like a really long ribbon, 15, 20 centimeters, would that increase the accuracy of our final answer? Let's say you touch th that piece with the, with the tongs, right? There's only a certain amount that could rub off on the tongs. And if you had to open the lid five times, there's only a certain amount that would be lost. That percentage loss would be smaller the bigger the mass. You see that? What I'm saying? Magnesium is getting hot and it's reacting with oxygen. Is there anything else in the atmosphere that's even more so uh, in higher concentration than oxygen? By three and a half times the concentration of oxygen. Nitrogen. It's there. Nitrogen. Why is nitrogen reacting with magnesium? But is nitrogen known to be a very reactive thing, first of all? No. It, it has a triple bond to another nitrogen. It's pretty unreactive. It's stable. It's in Earth. You guys, when this experiment appeared in the exams, one of the sources of error that was given credit for was saying that magnesium nitride is formed. Mg3 N2. Magnesium nitride could be formed. It's a valid answer then. How much of it we have in there, I don't know. But we'll look at the product in the end and we'll try to see. I want you guys to look up on and find an image. What is the color of magnesium oxide? And what's the color of magnesium nitride? And then we'll look at the color of our final product here. Magnesium oxide is white. Magnesium oxide is a very uh, clean looking white, isn't it? Like, like Mr. Ranjan's um, lab coat, right? And what about magnesium nitride? It's a yellow color. Greenish yellow. Um, yes, it says magnesium nitride is commonly described as yellow. It's, but it's definitely not white. So it's going to, in a small amount, be mixed with something that should be pure white. So if we don't get pure white, that could be one reason why. There could be another thing. There could be some unburnt magnesium in there that didn't completely combust. And it's still there as a grayish looking thing. But let's have a look then, guys. Let's see. What do you guys think about this using this, this glass rod here now? If you use like it to like break down the clumped up particles, then since it's glass, you can easily remove if like you've taken anything on it. I agree with that. You, it, it, it's not going to stick too much on the, on the glass rod. If right? we don't get the mass that we're expecting, one option that we have is to put it back over the flame. Uh, it's, a, it's a sign possibly that all of the magnesium is not reacted. And we would just let it heat some more and undergo some more combustion and if this if we leave it for another 15 minutes and the mass doesn't change well then we can say that uh, we've done all that we can do right so we're getting 41.35 okay this difference here this is the mass of the magnesium used. This minus this. So Mg that we use would be 0 0.26 grams. And then now after the oxygen is uh, added to it. If anyone's had any doubt about whether this mass would go up, you see it's happened, it's gone up. Mr. Saranjan is bringing the, the crucible lid to show you. Yeah, the crucible lid has had a little bit of a coat of the oxide there as well. And that's interesting to know that. What does that prove about the importance of the lid if oxide is coating it like that? That means if it wasn't there, like a lot would escape. Yes, if it wasn't there, that is evidence to show you that a lot would escape. 0.26 grams is the magnesium. 
And then the magnesium oxide now is what? You have an extra 0 0.14. So 0 0.40 grams. So what is the maximum oxygen? The difference between these two is that's magnesium alone and this is magnesium with oxygen. So it's 0 0.14 grams, mass in grams, divided by the relative atomic mass of oxygen, which is about 16. That's one thing in the empirical formula. And the other thing in the empirical formula is 0 0.26 divided by what is the atomic mass of magnesium? 24.3. This here, what number you get, and that there, what number you get. Share it with me, please. Uh, 0 0.0106 or 07. It's roughly 0 0.009. 0 0.09, right? So, we multiply each one by 1,000 to simplify it for what we can see. We'll get a ratio of 10.7. Shifting this three places, right? Shifting that three places, we'll get 9. So, we get a ratio of about 10.7 to 9. It's a pretty close match. This approximates to 1 to 1. 10.7 is, uh, is to 9. 11 is to 9. It's, you, you could, of course, go looking to try to find um, what's the simplest whole number ratio. The simplest whole number ratio there is 1 to 1. Okay? Uh, and sometimes you have to round up and you have to understand that there's experimental um, error and there's uncertainty. And if we continue to heat that like Mr. Ranjan is doing, Chances are we will get a little bit more here as well. This might go up to 0.15. Okay? This mass might change to 41.36. We will know that we're done with the whole thing when we get to the point where every time we heat it uh, and we come back and find the mass, it stays the same. We heat to constant mass. And it's an example of how you find the empirical formula of something.